Today I'm going to show you how to create a logo only using circles. Let's first start with the body of the owl. We'll do that by creating a circle in the middle of the artboard. Now before we get going, let's check a couple things first, that it's completely aligned to the center of the artboard. Next, let's make sure scale strokes and effects is turned off and then that we have a fill. And if your stroke is at one, let's just beef it up a little bit. I have mine at seven. So with that looking good, let's copy and paste in place to create a second circle right over it. And we're going to hold shift and use the arrow key to go over three times. And then the same thing opposite direction that way. We'll select both of these shapes and hold shift M. This is the shape builder tool. And we'll hold alt or option and get rid of these sides. Now, the one thing I'll ask you to do too is uh, click that shape right there because otherwise you'll have a duplicate behind you and it's really uh, better to do it now than later when, when you, we're cleaning things up. So you'll see that that just creates one shape. Next, we're going to create the head of the owl by creating a circle in the center of the artboard but this time we're going to make it slightly less than the, the body of the owl. We're going to hit Control or Command Y to go into Outline View. We're going to align the center of this circle with the body of the owl. Hitting the same short key, we're going to go back out. To make the face, we're going to select our head and copy and paste in place. Come over to the Properties panel and multiply this by 0.55. This will make the circle just a little bit larger than half of our head. We're going to hold shift and drag it over to the intersection and then arrow left key just once. Now, if you didn't see that intersect, you need to go to view and turn on your smart guides. Select that shape again and hold alt or option and shift and drag it over and arrow over one more time just like that. Now let's just first select these two and we're going to remove the fill by hold, hitting slash or just clicking that right there. And then now holding shift, select the head and go back into the shape builder and we're going to remove the bottom of these two paths, these two circles. And you'll see that they're not actually connected. So how we can fix this is go back into outline view and select uh, hold A or direct select, and then right click and hit join. Now, you'll see that when we go out of our outline view, it's all connected. I don't really like where this is aligned right now, so I'm going to bring this down to where this intersects with these two points. And to get rid of this tag, we'll simply just click on the head, go back into the shape builder and remove any excess off of that. And now to get the eyes, all we'll do is uh, copy and paste in place and holding shift and alt or option, we're going to do this. Now, a couple of ways we can get symmetry doing this, we can hold shift, because we know this is in our the center of our artboard, we can hold shift and go over and then Make sure your center aligned and then go over. And there you have it, symmetry. Another way you can do it is if you have this right here, we know that this is symmetrical right here. So we can copy and paste in place and hitting the O key, uh, this is the reflect tool, you'll see it over here. And then clicking on this anchor point, which we know is in the center of the artboard, now hold shift and like that, you'll see you'll get the same symmetry we did before. Next, we're going to work on the little tuft that goes below his body. So all we need to do for this is pretty much a duplicate of what we did for the body, where we're going to take a duplicate of our head and we're going to also remove the fill uh, with slash or just clicking remove fill. And then now just remember wherever this bottom point is, is as how tall this shape is going to be. So I'm going to put it 
generally right in the middle of the bottom of the head and the bottom of the body. Then copy and paste in place, and I'm going to hit shift four times, and then do the same thing, and then come over here with the shape builder. Now I'm only selecting these two shapes and remove the edges and then don't forget to combine this last shape. You can use control or command left bracket to send it behind it. And that's why having the fill is important because now you can see that how this is shaping up. Next, we're going to create the tail feathers. And to do this, we're going to take the tuft and copy and paste it, pull it down below, and I'm going to send it to the back with control shift uh, left bracket. And then to get the little left and right ones, what we're going to do is we're going to go back into the reflect tool and click this anchor point here, slide it around to a position that we like. And in fact, we could send that in the back right now to just see where it's at. Then hit S, that won't change the anchor point, but if you do go out, you'll need to put your anchor point back there. And holding shift, resize the tail feather to a spot that you like it. Now we're going to copy and paste in place, go back to the reflect tool and click that anchor point and hold shift, quantize it to 90 degrees, send it to the back, and we'll, we'll actually add the fill back in here by just clicking color there and you'll see that our tail feathers look pretty nice there. I'm going to resize all of them to be a little bit smaller and bring it back down like that. I think I'm good with the tail feathers. Moving on to the wings, we're going to select the entirety of the owl and hit control or command G to group it and then using alt or option shift, we're going to constrain this and move it down to about right there. Next, we're going to go back to our ellipse tool and once again, making sure that we're in the center, we are going to align to that same little spot right there. You can see that intersection. And we're going to put that circle right there and using control or command shift left bracket, we're going to send it to the back. And again, just make sure it's aligned. You, you don't want to mess up that shape. Copy and paste in place. And then we're going to align this one to the bottom of the body of the owl right there and send it to the back. That's our wing shape right there. Next, we'll copy and paste in place and make this ellipse nice and big. Align this to the top of the owl and we have our shape right there. Next, we're going to copy and paste in place again. This time, we're going to make it bigger, but first let's remove this fill so we can see where, where we're going here. This one is going to go to the top of the eyebrows. We'll copy and paste in place and send this one to the bottom of the eyes like that. And then we'll take both of these, copy and paste both of them in place using the reflect tool or O and holding shift, we're going to reflect this perfectly, but we're going to first drag this down to where this one aligns to the bottom there. And we'll pull this one up to intersect right there. Then using coming back and finding this circle, we're going to copy and paste in place one more time, pull this out here, send it to the back. And next, we'll take the body of our owl and send this to the back so we can see what we're shape, uh, sh shape building and select all the circles that you've created now and hit shift M for shape builder and just come on in and oh, looks like I missed that one. So come back in and we're going to shape all of this. Now combining all of these together 
the, uh, before we leave, I mean, we could call that good if we want those strokes there, but before we leave, I'd actually like to make each one of these an individual shape. And the reason for that is if we do want to color our shape, we're going to be able to come back and do that rather than have to mess with with individual strokes, which won't really work. And because of uh, how we did that, we'll get rid of that. This is just like that uh, because of the stroke, align stroke. So if you come to your properties stroke and then do center align, that should fix the visual of that. It looks like we missed that, but it doesn't really matter because this is all going to go to the back and we can group this as well. Delete any sort of spare shape you can see. And in fact, if you want to make sure you did it right, you can come in here. Now, this is this is pretty good right here. But if I were to be sending this to, you know, a printer or something like that, I would want to make sure that all of my shapes are settled because right now in this group, we still have this fill. Now to clean this up, all I'm going to do is come in here and select all of our shapes. And we're going to go into this group because really we need to clean up this the bird body the most starting out. So we'll come in and select these three shapes to start with. And instead of instead of uh, selecting all this together, I'm going to actually make sure that these shapes come first. And once again, to change the stroke, all we need to do is go like that. And that, that should fix that issue with the, the stroke being on the inside like that. And if you go to our shape builder, our outline view, you'll still see that these objects are there and we can just get rid of them like that. Same thing right here. We are going to take the head of the owl and the tuft and come in, clean that up. Next, we're going to get rid of the that head shape right there and go back to our outline and delete that. Now delete this one as well. So then we'll take care of the wings next. We can do that selecting our group and then our wing shapes. Go back into our shape builder and build our shapes on the outlines here. Go into our outline view and select and delete these these outward shapes. Going back into our regular view, you'll see that our shapes are well constructed. And that's going to do it for this tutorial. There you have it. That's how you create a logo only using circles. If you like this video, hit like, subscribe and turn on notifications. Come share your work and build your portfolio with us on our Facebook group, UI, UX and graphic design portfolio growth. Here you'll learn how to build, grow and maintain your portfolio. And remember, rule number one is stay creative.